Before I start building my butterflies, I have a bit of a dilemma. This is the ideal size that I want. I really like the size of this butterfly. And these are the two sizes available that I have right now. This is a rather large piece. These are both slices from, from them. So you can see how big this is, how much bigger that is compared to that. And this one's considerably smaller. So what, what I need to do, if I want to have one this size, I'm going to have to cut off a piece of my cane here and reshape it somewhere in between this size and this size. So that's what I'm going to do right now. When cutting this, I'm going to cut what I think will give me the proper amount of butterflies. You know, after I cut all my little slices, I, I don't know how many I'm going to put on this vase, but I need to give myself plenty to work with. When I reduce it, it'll grow in length. So I'll get more slices out of it. So I'm thinking somewhere along right here. Nice clean cut with the tissue slicer. There, now I have this little block of cane and I could put this away. The next step would be to reduce this and I'll begin doing that. I'm just going to be pushing in on these corners. Reducing clay, reducing canes rather, is a very slow process, especially if it's been sitting for a while. This has been sitting for a few years, so it's, I want to say it's lost its conditioning. It can kind of crack or fall apart, so to speak. But I can see that it's still very moist and it was a very good mixture of clay. I got lucky with this, this cane right here. So I'm going to keep doing this just slowly, not forcing it too much. And I'm, I'm going for the middle of the cane instead of trying to do the whole thing. I'm focusing on the, the middle of it, of the height. I don't know if that makes sense. That'll shape like an hourglass type figure if you keep going like that, which is okay because I can squeeze the ends later. And I'm using my fingers in the shape of the cane itself, which is kind of convenient because it works that way. And I'm pushing in like this, trying to compress it. This will keep the form, the triangle form. I won't wind up with a circle or some other weird shape. Look at that. I don't know if you can tell how that's starting to look like an hourglass. That middle part is reduced. And then you can just do the ends afterwards. I'm trying to do this without creating much distortion. I want to waste as little of this as possible, but distortion is almost inevitable when trying to reduce canes. I want to keep track of what I got going on here. It's still a little bit larger than what I'm wanting, so I'll keep going. This takes a little bit of patience, and it could be even tedious to some, but it's not too bad. You got to think of the, the outcome, what you're trying to do, I'm trying to reduce something. Going for that middle again. You can already tell that it's getting longer. This is more than what I cut. Well, it's the same amount of clay, but when you go to change the shape of something, like if it's this big, reducing it to this big will make it grow longer. I don't know, it's kind of silly, but it's just how it works. Just for reference, you can see how much that's reduced. I just laid that on top of one of the slices from what I just cut it off. You can see that it's smaller now. So let me look. This is getting really, really close. I'm almost there. And it looks like I did it without hardly any distortion. Distortion is where it bulbs out. It kind of go, the ends the ends kind of mess up. They do this something weird. Um, right here, it's kind of like bulbous in the middle because you can see the pattern kind of wrapping around the ends. That's kind of okay. It'll just be I'll slice those ends off for a good clean start. Moving this around by pushing and pushing and pushing is causing it to become more active like jello, so to speak. 
it's actually quite lovely the way this is reducing. Okay, now we have it reduced quite a bit. That looks about what I had going on here. Now, I remember rolling the ends to where they're rounded, which this is the end with the little color right here. So I'm just going to gently work that into like a more rounded. I'm trying to do some shaping first before I go and slice it because it's easy. It'll be a little easier. I'm just gently pressing and then rolling it. That's giving me a more rounded profile right here. And it's also making it longer on this, this end, which is more distortion. Okay, I like that. To check it, you just cut the end of it off, cut the distortion off. See how this is rounded now? Looks pretty good. Now what I want to do, I want to try to put a profile right here because see, you see how I have this notch? Well, I, I kind of cut that in with a tool, but I found that I didn't really have to do that. I can notch it on the cane itself. You know, it works just as well. So let me go ahead and try to do that. First, I'm going to make a mark where the actual center is on both sides. That way I can understand it better. Continue my marker on around. That just gives me a guide right there. That's where I'm going to compress right now. And I got this tool. It seems to be a pretty... I wish I had something square. Or not square, but like triangle, but I don't. So I'm just going to dent it and then gently roll it one way and then do the same thing on this side nice it's actually kinda nice I'm gonna use the this flat area right here try to create emphasis on that contour this will speed up. I know it's taking a couple minutes to do this, but it'll be faster doing this as opposed to cutting and then trying to trim every single wing. This is probably better. So this is the outside. This is the bottom. Bottom can get a little rounded too because it's kind of sharp. I'm pressing gently. I don't want it as much as the other one. That looks about exactly the same size. So I have, I don't know, that's about a little more than an inch of workable cane. There was hardly any waste from distortion, which is really good. So now I can go ahead and cut me some slices. I'm going to need two slices per butterfly. This is going to make 12 wings, which is only going to make six butterflies. So I probably could have did a little more, cut a little more off of this. But as opposed to just making a whole bunch, I'm going to start off with just this and see, you know, how well I like it. If I need to make more, I can make more. But now I'm going to cut these where they're relatively even. And I'm, I'm just cutting the notches that I made. It never hurts to have a guide and a plan. Now I know these are a little thick, but they're going to get sanded and stuff. And it's always better to have maybe a little more than what you need than not enough. And these are looking lovely. They're all uniform, very, very uniform. And it looks like I'm going to get a little more than what I thought because the guides were whacked. I need to try to get one more out of this. Just cut the back side of it off, the distortion. That's the bulbous part of it. And it looks like I got one more wing. So 14. I have seven butterflies now. This is going to be lovely. This is going to be very, very lovely. So let me put these to the side and I can make me up some bodies for these butterflies. Wings everywhere, wings, wings everywhere. 
If you haven't figured this out about me now, I like to use as many systems or methods that I can think of as possible when doing things. That way I have a always have a unified result. So when making these bodies, instead of just pulling off little pieces and rolling them up and it'd be all varied, the, the best way to go about this is just to roll this out into a snake. Gently pull while I'm pushing down. I'm moving my fingers along it, that way I don't have it all uneven. I'm gonna cut this into equal strips and with those, I'll make the body of these butterflies. So I just cut it down the middle. I'm using this, what I already made as reference. It looks to be somewhere around maybe that much clay. So we'll see. I'll go ahead and cut a piece of that. I'll make another cut using that as a guide. And I'll take this first one and kind of shape it into the body. It's just basically like an ovaloid shape. You don't have to really be all that perfect. The majority of it's going to be hidden underneath the, the butterfly wings in, in the first place. That looks really good. It's about what I got going on with the other butterfly. good enough. Of course I could shape it differently. If I need the body to be a little longer, I can just roll it like this a little. But I'll have the same amount of clay I'm working with, so it won't it'll take a lot of the guesswork out. And that's I think that's what I'm getting at is I don't like guesswork. It's going to have a head attached to it. That's with the wings somewhat kind of together looks a little better when they're pulled apart like that and now you have it that's a that's a uh, butterfly ready to go so I'll, I'll use this as a guide on what I'm to make and this as a guide on what I'm to cut and you use the same one that you're cutting every time otherwise it'll kind of change over time and because it's a uh, snake that's pretty consistent we know that the girth of it is the same too. So this is going to be pretty uniform. It's a good little system. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a few more just in case I need to shape up some more, you know, doing what I did before with the cane. If I need to slice off another chunk of that and reshape it, I'll have already the body parts cut because I imagine it's kind of hard rolling the same thickness uh, snake you know more than once without a caliper or something like that but I don't I'm not gonna get into all that this ain't this ain't rocket science this is just polymer clay and if I don't use these I can just bunch it all back together so no harm. I want to put quite a few butterflies around this. I also want to make more butterfly canes of, you know, different colors and stuff. I think this would be really nice. Now as far as the head, I can just pull off little pieces and do this, you know, do that. Well, you know, I just said I don't like doing guesswork. So I'm going to roll this out even smaller and then cut them into equal amounts. Cut them into what I would think would make decent size heads. So I'll put this to the side and use that as a guide on making more of them. And it's purely going to be by eye trying to copy what I got over there. I figure I'll do just two so you can see see how I go about trying to mimic something I got going on and that actually looks almost identical it's really really nice that's the one I just did I'll put it to the side and I'll keep using this one as a guide 
for the head. Uh, how does that look? I, li I think I just left one end kind of squared and rounded the other end off. Yeah, that's how I did it. It actually gains its shape as you press down on it. It's super simple. That's the head and the body. How about I take my wing now? It can go right right before the head. That's probably not even a very accurate butterfly, by the way. It's just, or moth, whatever you want to call this thing. It's just something pretty. And the height of this, I don't know, you can't really see that, but this, it's kind of thick. So when it's sanded, if you're real careful, you can actually do more refining through the sanding. But these will be pressed against the vase, and it'll have TLS on the back sides of it. But this is a very good butterfly. It actually looks better than, way better than the, mine's all wonky. Well, they're both mine. It, this is, what this is, is every time you do something again, or for the second time or the third time, you get better at it. Uh, better comes from practice. That's, I, it, it can't be any more true than that. Okay, so now I just need to change my filming angle so I can start putting these on the vase. Let me go ahead and do that and form up the rest of these and I will be right back.